right, so let's talk about short channel effect in a modern MOSFET. That's in the context of um, making device small, devices smaller as part of Moore's law. And let's figure out what some of the challenges are. So, you're making the gate length, the distance between source and drain, smaller and smaller. And we had discussed similar things in a BJT when you bring these PN junctions closer and closer that they start to talk to each other. So these um, PN junctions that you have here are coming very close together. And what that does, and I'll depict it, some of the reasons in, in the next few slides, what it does is if you, you have a long channel that seems to perform very well, what happens is that your off current is getting worse and worse and it rises exponentially. Again, this is on a log scale. Okay? And as I had shown before in the previous section, the off current is really determining the leak uh, or the, the leakage power in these transistors. So the switch is becoming really leaky and consuming a lot of power. So that's a bad thing. All right. So if you, if you have a large drain bias, so you apply even more voltage here, then you know by now that this depletion region is getting larger and larger. Um, and so eventually you, you can lead to, to something like punch through, like what we had studied in the BJT. All right. So as the gate control is weaker, we, the slope of this um, transistor is getting less, so it's less ideal, right? I had said, well, most transistors look like this. If you translate this up with the appropriate threshold shift, you see that the curves are identical. All right. Good. All right. So if you stick the just simple scaling and making a gate smaller and smaller into a standard simulation tool uh, that you can find on NanoHub, like this MOSFET tool, and you take your, your standard device and you make it uh, the gate smaller and smaller. What will you find? Well, you will find that when you plot the uh, potential along the channel that looks for a large gate, when for a 50 nanometer gate, that's the blue curve, you, you get the picture you expected, where up here you have a nice peak that's blown up in here, and life is good. Now, if you make the device smaller and smaller, the drain potential starts to affect the slope here, and it affects up here the barrier height. And that any ch small change in that barrier height, you know, has an exponential effect on the number of carriers that you're exposing that are sitting here in the, in the source. Okay? So that means in a simple calculation, a semi-classical transport simulation will give you this. This tool is not wrong. It, it works very well. And given these approximations of a drift diffusion, it will show that this transistor will not work very well at all anymore. Okay? So, that has to do with drain-induced barrier lowering. So by pulling the potential so hard from the drain, you lower the barrier here and therefore expose more carriers in your, in your thermal tail, and that is why this current goes up. Okay? All right, so this is called drain-induced barrier lowering. So what that means is you need better electrostatic control over the channel, and we'll talk about that in a couple of slides down the line here. So, how can you um, calculate this more analytically, analytically, so to get some insight, so it doesn't just come out of the simulator? So, there's something called a V-threshold roll-off. When, you, as you make the channel smaller and smaller, that's the scaling direction, what happens to your threshold voltage? Remember, that's the voltage at which you begin to invert uh, your channel. Okay, so we had written down the threshold voltage as the potential in the semiconductor as being 2 phi F minus the bulk charge. That's your ideal um, threshold voltage. We have the doping here, 
we have the uh, thickness of the depletion region, the oxide capacitance, and this is just a term again from uh, the doping level um, that needs to be inverted. Okay. Now, what happens is that this threshold voltage, as you uh, make it uh, make the gate length or the channel length shorter and shorter, goes down. Okay. So let's talk a bit about where this comes from. So this is only valid way up here when the gate uh, the channels are long. Now let's calculate some expressions uh, where this threshold voltage roll-off comes from. Okay. So let's uh, look at some of the physical effects like this. So we can define a, a nominal junction length L, and then we said biasing has an effect on this gate such that you have depletion regions here that are now bias dependent. And of course, even under without bias, you have these depletion regions. So you have a, a, an electrical channel length L prime, L prime. and that um, you can uh, exemplify this with this trapezoid, right? That's the region over which in WT, that's the width of your channel, you want to control the electrostatics, okay? Now, this drain potential here is going to impact this area here, and we want to calculate the effect of this gate control region. So how do we do this? So let's calculate the area of this trapezoid, right? The area of the trapezoid is uh, the height of it and L plus L prime over 2. So that's just the average. And Z is sort of, if you will, the depth of this transistor in this direction, right? So that's where we can pick up some finite Z. Okay, and then you, pl uh, yeah, uh, so that's the charge uh, in at the inversion point, here's the doping, and, the, uh, and Q the charge, of course. Okay, and then you uh, divide this by the oxide capacitance, which includes uh, uh, a factor of two L here, ultimately. Oh, L in here. Okay. So now, for a long channel device, L and L prime are close to each other, right? Here, the difference between L and L prime is becoming an important uh, key element in the electrostatics. So if you said in the limit of a long channel where L and L prime are about the same, then you get an expression we had before, that the charge in the long channel is just the thickness of the channel times the doping times charge. So that comes out of this expression, right? If L and L prime are about the same, you cancel the L, two Ls, and you exp you get the same uh, expression for this for this limit. Okay, so looks good. Now, if you calculate the difference in threshold voltage between a long channel device and the short channel device, you get you would calculate this. So that's the difference in threshold uh, voltage. Okay, and we're just using these two expressions and plug it in here, right? So we take this guy in in here, and this guy in here, and we get this. It's just algebra. And you resolve this for L minus L prime over 2L, okay? So again, in the limit of L prime being close to L, that threshold voltage uh, change is zero. But as um, the two are getting, um, if L prime, relatively speaking, or the difference between L and L prime is getting larger, then this threshold shift is getting larger as well. Okay? And you have a negative term in here. So what you want to do is you want to minimize the threshold shift. Okay? And what does that mean? You want to minimize L minus L prime, right? You want to this, this, uh, this difference to be small on the relative scale of the overall channel, okay? So, let's calculate this L prime. How, how big is it? So, let's introduce this junction radius here, Rj, in the system. We can calculate the depletion region in the source, and we could say, what is 
if we wanted to know what's L minus L prime in this trapezoid, we can just write down this, um, uh, this uh, triangle here with a 90 degrees angle, right? And if we wanted to do simple geometry, we know what WT square is plus uh, this guy squared plus, uh, well, including RJ, and that needs to be the hypotenuse, right? So that's this Pythagoras. Pythag Don't challenge me on that, on that English word. <laughs> Sorry. So you just write down this uh, uh, expression um, for this uh, uh, triangle. And you can solve it for L minus L prime, right? That's, that's trivial geometry. Now, if you plug this expression into the change of the threshold, what you find is this longish looking thing, okay? And what does that mean? It, if you want to minimize the threshold voltage, that means you want to minimize L minus L prime over L. That's the result. What is it you want to minimize? You want to minimize this junction radius. You want very shallow junctions, okay? So the smaller you can make this radius, the shallower you can do your uh, doping in the source and the drain, the better off you are, okay? And you can define some minimum acceptable uh, voltage, um, uh, threshold voltage shift that that you, uh, as an engineer, are willing to live with, and that will give you an answer as to the junction depth that you might want to consider in your design. Okay? Now, so that is um, the math that shows you that at some point your threshold voltage will go down, it'll have a negative shift, you can define some minimum value that you're, um, or you can define some uh, some some th uh, threshold shift, the maximum of which you're willing uh, to deal with, if you're looking at it in an absolute value, and then that, de that defines some minimum value in L and gives you some alpha that you can design for, okay? So what are your opportunities to do this? So you can do very shallow junctions with the geometry of the transistors, right? There's technologies like laser annealing of the junctions, meaning um, you use lasers to really pro embed the um, dopants as shallow as possible with very local heating to make sure the, uh, the dopants are really sitting on the appropriate lattice site. So it's like local melting, so to speak, to make sure that um, you, you uh, move the uh, ions, the dopant ions, in their proper spaces. So you can't just heat up the whole circuit anymore, so you have laser annealing on those junctions. Or you can do FinFETs that have a better geometry in terms of short channel effects. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. You could create, the, uh, reduce the substrate do doping NA, so the doping that sits here, right? And if you do that, then you have to consider the, the thickness of this channel again, right? And, the, and consider junction breakdown, because now your depletion regions are getting also larger, right? Okay. You could consider thinner gate oxides. So if you make the gate oxide thinner, then your capacitance rises, right? And therefore, the, the threshold shift uh, uh, is reduced. Now, if you make the gate oxide too thin, you will have tunneling current, and which is also not a good thing. Um, you can also have a higher gate dielectric, and that gate dielectric shows up here in the in the capacitance again. So, if you increase your K, you can reduce uh, uh, the oxide capacitance and therefore uh, reduce the threshold shift. But and the facts are that you can all that these dielectrics also have uh, bulk traps in them. So we talked in the last section on, on effects of charge in the oxide. So that's another challenge. So that's a discussion here on the short channel effect and some of the uh, things ha that have been done over the years um, to uh, 
to mitigate this short channel effect. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about more about the control of the uh, threshold voltage. So that's going to be in the next section. I'll see you there.